Welcome back to Summer Money. The federal government continues to trumpet medical research as a key industry for Australia's future, one in which Australia possesses a competitive advantage and a record of success. Virolytics has recently been named as one of the six tips for 2015 by industry newsletter BioShares and its CEO, Dr Malcolm McCall, joins me now from our Sydney CBD studio. Mr. Dr. McCall, thank you so much for joining me. Now, it was about a year ago that my colleague uh, Kate Williams spoke to you, and at that point you were raising about $27 million in capital. I understand that that, that capital raising is now finished. Can you tell us how successful it was? Oh, look, it was a tremendous uh, transformational event for the company, obviously, because, uh, you know, it really took us into, into a situation where we had enough cash to run, a, you know, a series of uh, further clinical trials uh, to further develop our Cavatac an oncolytic virus for the treatment of uh, you know, late stage and difficult to treat cancers. So I guess it just elevated us up to, to the point where we can really run important clinical trials going forward to um, hopefully uh, you know, add considerable value for uh, our shareholders. Yeah, let's focus in on Cavatac. I, I know that you were planning on having some pretty um, important clinical studies in the last 12 months. Did any of them proceed mm. and did you get any sort of lead results on how, how, how the drug is actually performing? Look, it's really been a phenomenal uh, 12 months and I think, you know, there wouldn't be another biotech in the country that's kind of had the exposure we've had in terms of pre presenting at major conferences in, in North America and Europe and, and really, uh, you know, with the exceptional results uh, in, in the phase two study in the melanoma patients where we met the primary endpoint. So, uh, you know, it's been an exceptional year with the results. I guess it's, it's put us on the world stage. It's, it's, it, we now have the attention of, you know, major pharma partners. Uh, you know, we continue to have support of the institutional investors who invested in us 12 months ago. And, you know, there are other institutional investors who are also keen to, um, to take a part of the company. So it, it's, uh, it's been an excellent, excellent 12 months with lots of great results coming through. So where are you at now? Is it still about raising more capital for further studies or, or are you getting to the more the marketing side of things? Or where, where exactly are you in the process of getting this drug to market? So, you know, we, we're very well funded now. We have enough uh, funds to take us through to the end of calendar 2016, so a capital raise is not on the agenda at this point. Really, the, the goal at this stage is to advance, continue to advance in the clinic. So we have studies underway in melanoma, which have been a success, as I said. We're looking to broaden Cavatac out into other cancer types. We have a nice uh, a study underway in the UK looking at other cancers, including prostate and, and lung cancer. We plan to start another study in the UK in superficial bladder cancer and a combination study with a, a blockbuster drug in the immuno-oncology field. So the goal is uh, generate data across a range of indications, bring that to uh, the attention of big pharma partners and obviously look towards uh, some sort of uh, you know, transformational uh, transaction uh, with a pharma company to reward our uh, shareholders and, and institutional investors. So Dr McCall, did you always think that this drug had uh, wider implications than just for melanoma or is it because of the studies that you're actually seeing that it might actually be able to be used on, on a wider range of, of cancers? Look, it's been a lot of thought. We've got an excellent team in terms of, you know, um, scientific advisors, our own board, of course, um, consultants who help us uh, to really plan uh, the clinical studies and also pre-clinical studies that lead into clinical work. So there's been a lot of thought put into that, a lot of uh, evidence for uh, this application of Cavatac across a, a range of cancers beyond melanoma. And it's on that basis that we've then entered the clinic to look at other cancer types. So it really, I think one of the things that impresses institutional investors and uh, we think will very much impress pharma companies is that there's a, a great sort of body of scientific work that's, that's built which justifies moving forward in the clinic. And to this point, we've seen you know, very promising results in clinical studies in patients with late stage cancer. When you're looking at the marketability of a, of a cancer drug, does it, does it matter what type of cancer it treats? I'm thinking the comparison between, say, melanoma and prostate cancer. Mm. Melanoma obviously has a, a wider, I guess, age group that it affects, including very young people, mm. versus prostate mm. cancer, which tends to uh, affect the elderly. Does that matter mm. as far as, you know, the worth of that drug, as far as, you know, the length of life that it kind of gives to people? Is that, is that how you target whether or not you're going to be using it for different types of cancer? Well, look, you know, it is a factor, obviously, in terms of your decisions that you make in terms of which clinical trials you'll, you'll commence. But really, in terms of where we're at, you know, melanoma is number five in the US. Prostate cancer is, you know, number one or two. Uh, lung right. cancer, number one or two as well. So all of the cancers that we're targeting with Cavatac are all very, very important uh, cancers. And, and the reality is, uh, sadly, that although there's been lots of breakthroughs in the last, you know, three or four years in these cancer types, there is still massive room for improvement in terms of uh, new agents 
and also combining a drug like uh, Cavatac with some of these existing agents to make them work even better. So, no, look, really, oncology is the most important space in the pharmaceutical industry mm. in terms of uh, revenue. And so, we're, you know, it's a very exciting time to have a drug that uh, looks to have pretty encouraging results in oncology in very important cancer indications. And Dr McCall, when you were last on and speaking to Kate Williams, you spoke about the fact that most of the, the capital raising was going to occur in the UK and the US. Obviously, mm -hmm. in the last year, we've had this big focus from the federal government about potentially a medical research fund to be funded by uh, the Medicare co-payment. Do you, mm -hmm. how important do you think that is for Australian companies like your own in getting the funding from onshore areas? Or can that be just raised through traditional means? Well, look, I think any sort of non-dilutive funding that you might have as a result of federal government support is obviously, you know, very welcome. And, and of course, there is a scheme existing today where we, um, you know, are fortunate to receive some funding from the federal government. But I think when you need to undertake the sort of uh, transformational capital raise that we uh, did uh, 12 months ago, the reality is that the pool of funds that you need to, uh, you know, enable that are going to have to come out of the US and the UK. And, and, you know, there's a lot of money over there for biotech investment. Of course, it's a very rigorous process to, um, you know, sort through uh, biotech companies and find the best ones. And, and we're really delighted that, that some of the best uh, specialist healthcare institutional funds uh, decided to invest in viralytics. And I know uh, that they're, they're very pleased with the way we're progressing in, in the clinic. Dr. McCall, thank you so much for your time. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks very much, Carrington. Good night. And that was Dr. McCall.